Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, we are going to restore a General Electric stereo console. Um, I've been meaning to do one of these for quite some time because I keep reading that they're kind of scary to restore and it's probably because they're full of wires. And uh, the reason for that is that GE, um, I think pretty much were the first people to go component in stereo consoles so that everything was smaller and the preamp and the tuner and the amplifier were all separate parts put together with wires, which I'll show you later. As you can see, this is the traditional long face, which we have here, I don't know what to quite call it, but we got over here, we have a Kubrick, which is more of a square uh, tuner unit control center, um, but everything in there is the same as everything in there, just in a different configuration. Um, and when JE did this, they'll be able to get their consoles a lot lower and uh, the low, low boy style, I guess you'd call it. Um, for instance, if you look right here, we've got a Motorola, that's a Sears, there's a GE, and on the end, even lower, is another GE. And um, like I said, being component, they could get that stuff in there a lot slimmer. Um, for instance, this is a Zenith chassis right here. And you can see how tall that is. And the majority of Zeniths were quite tall. Um, easy for bigger people to bend over, I guess. But the GE is pretty much half, well, what am I saying? Two thirds, quarter of that. But it's in components. There's a separate tuner, preamp, etc. cetera. Um, this is a, what is this? This is a, C711G, it has a separate amplifier section in there. We'll get to that. Um, I'm not sure what the G stands for, because this one's a, it's Kubrick's a C522G. I see the G all the time. I don't know what it means. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're gonna get busy with this guy. It has a bit of uh, top issues, as you can see. It's got a lot of fine scratches, like somebody was sliding boxes on it or something, but we'll address that and it'll be a lot better. And um, yeah, so, oh, let's talk about this guy. So when I got this one, seized, wouldn't move, seized, wouldn't move. Now, I cannot tell you how many GEs I have got with seized platters and motors. That one's the same as over there, is there as well. Um, and one of the reasons I think is the motors, GE motors run very hot, the oil wears out, and then when it's been sat there for 20 years, somebody turns it on and it gets seized up, or it seizes naturally. Seizes, sorry, seizes naturally. So we're gonna, there's a clip in there, we'll take that up, but we're gonna spray some WD in there, and in there to get that moving. We'll leave it for a few hours, then we're gonna take this guy off. Okay, so we sprayed a little WD in there, we put some in there as well. We would probably do that on the bench, but why not? That's the little clip that comes off there. You gotta take that clip off to get the platter off. That clip is not needed. Um, it's actually a very tight fit and it could actually reduce your RPMs when all done. That clip is only needed if you have a portable and this thing is flipping, flipping up on its side. Um, but while we're talking WD, let's talk hinges. So this thing, has been, as you can see, it's very stiff. You've got to be gentle because you can break these springs actually. So this thing has been sat probably for 30 years in this position, which is all the strain is on that spring. That spring is fully loaded right now. So one of the first things you do, pretty much like when you do with a car hood springs, is you're going to put a little bit of WD, boom in there, boom in there, Hold a rag underneath because hold a rag underneath because it will start to trickle out. And the same on that. Put in there, put in there, hold a rag underneath, and let it soak in. And once it's soaked in, then you can work the top nice and easy, backwards and forwards. Because you can see right now, see, because that spring is under load. 
and will not let this sit properly. To adjust, when it's, you've got it all done, they're nice and moving again. To adjust the tension on the spring, you always adjust the tension with the lid up, and it's that screw right there, screwing, screwing up, increases the tension, and down, releases the tension. Um, and then you basically, it's trial and error until you get a nice moving lid, but doesn't have that bow in it. Okay, so we put some WD in there, let it soak for a bit, and then we worked it backwards and forwards, nice and easy. Um, we did adjust the tensions with that screw underneath there, and it falls down so much nicer, as you can see. And it is now nice and flush. That bow is not there because the spring is over tensioned. Um, so yeah, don't forget to do that. Um, oh, the noise in the background is my swamp cooler. Just so you know, it is. Well, that's pumping out 70 something, but outdoors in beautiful Nevada, it's 110. All right, more to come. Okay, so we've had WD-40 sitting in here, sitting in here for a while. Um, I thought I'd take this guy off here rather than on the bench because I would need some resistance to try and pull this off. This is really, really seized up, even with WD-40. So I ended up just unloosing the screw, the grub screw there and pulling it off because I got to get that off to get this off. So WD-40, we're going to slightly rotate it while pulling upwards, as you can see, it is tight. That's why I thought I'd do this in here rather than on the bench, because as you can see, I can pull against its own support. Of course, you could introduce some heat. You could let a uh, Soldering iron sit on there, but then you might damage the rubber. This is coming off, it's, it's working. Oh, there we go. Oh, put that back on. And there you have it. Okay, we got that sucker off and uh, full of surprises here. There's the idler wheel. And you see how that has just been pushed against the capstan there, the spindle capstan for 20 or 30 years and um, completely deformed. So this was left in the on position at some point and another telltale of that, I'll tell you in a minute, but this is seized. That will not turn, it is seized. And that told me that this was stuck in on, that was stuck in on, so I immediately unplugged it because that's how you fry motors if it's not already fried. Um, because when the phono's on, it turns this unit on without the power being on there, the main power button. Um, just a feature of consoles. Not all consoles do it, but some do. It's basically so you can have the record playing and then the last record, it'll shut the unit off. I guess it was a safety feature back in the day. Well, this did work of a fashion. We'll turn it on here. Um, it's got a very, very noisy pot. on the right channel is not even working. Right channel doesn't appear to work and I, I guarantee you it's because of all the dirt that got in here. Um, it looks great but it's not a great design because it gets in a lot of dirt. These rocker switches always need major cleaning. Let's see if I can show you. There you go. That's the right channel working now. Common problem on the GEs, common problem on the GEs, rocker switches as you can see, um, we just made contact. Anyway, um, we're gonna get this sucker out next and uh, we'll show you what's in store. Okay, we're gonna take the back panel off. Um, you can see actually when that person turned it on, plugged it in the wall, I just plugged it out really quickly. I don't think you'd better save the motor, it's probably burnt out. 
um, but we've got four screws, one, two, three, four. We'll take this cover off. Uh, the jetpack will come off eventually, but as you can see already, it's a lot of wires, which I'll show you. This thing's Portify equipped. It doesn't have one, because um, you'd plug it in there and you'd plug it in there. Um, I've yet to mess around with Portify. I did have one speaker, but it didn't work properly. It needed a complete rebuild. So I've got to get myself a Portify speaker and play around with that. But anyway, let's get that off. All right, we got the back off. I took the record player out to throw some more light on the subject. And that's what we see. That's kind of intimidating, isn't it? That's a lot of wires. It's a rat's nest. Anyway, they all do something. And um, we got to label them, mark them, photograph them, uh, whatever you got to do. Uh, they all do something. We have uh, each channel here has its own circuit breaker um, for overload protection. Um, another thing about GEs, um, fortunately, is that all the cables are white, pink, and lilac. And as they fade over the years, they're very hard to distinguish. So make sure you do um, really good labels and marking and photos. Um, but once you figure out what everything does, it's not that bad. You've got a lot of antenna stuff going here. Um, the jetpack has its own connection. Not sure why it's called the jetpack. Looks like one, I guess, but that's a, an audio center function control right there. You know, you've got tape in and out, what have you, speakers. Uh, on and off, uh, external, what have you. So this is the amplifier. It's a big amplifier. It's a separate unit, obviously, and it sounds really amazing when it's recapped and done right. Um, the cheaper model, or the less powerful model, had its amplifier mounted to the whole control section over there. But this was, uh, this was very upmarket for the day. All right, let's get busy. Okay, um, we're going to take the top unit out first, but we've got to disconnect it. So as you can see, I've marked this top Molex one there because they are exactly the same. That's audio right there. Focus. There you go. You can see I've marked the top one. The one behind it is power. Um, so as long as you've marked the top one and took a photograph, you can't go wrong because they've got silver insulators. That doesn't. And that's a power source which goes, which plugs into there. If you can see right between, I don't know, focus down in there, but I'll show you later. Um, that gives power to the uh, record player and what have you, but that's connected to the amp. So like I said, mark and take photos. Okay, uh, then we are gonna disconnect the, disconnect, disconnect the audio input left and right here. RCA jacks, just pull them off. This is a grounding strap covered in tape. You don't do that and it'll be just a spade end fitting. And you also, if you'll focus, get out of the way, down in there, that's your on lamp, that's your cabinet lamp. You know the one at the front that tells you the unit's on. Um, the two pink wires, what go to it, they're covered in tape, so it's better if you could just get in there and then do that little mount screw. Um, these white ones are the audio uh, speaker wires that go to the left channel right there. But you're gonna take that off rather than take all the unplug those wires because they're all taped up. So get that off as well. Okay, so we've been marking, photoing, and we're unplugging. Uh, change of tack. I'm gonna pull the amplifier out first because it might make getting down in there easier um, and what have you. So this, because I remember there's actually four screws holding this down and then at the back, it's kind of a slide in clamp. So you're gonna pull, pull this out because it's kind of got a sliding uh, captive, uh, what would you call them? You know, rail at the back there. So you're gonna lift it and pull it but you're not gonna go all the way because we have to disconnect the output, the audio output lines, which are tucked back in there, which we should be able to get through the top. All right, good luck. Okay, so that worked. 
there's your audio out right there and as you can see all the cables look exactly the same you've got a, a ground and a left and a right um, this is your phono power and that's power in but that's already connected and disconnected the other end so take those off and then you should be able to slide the unit straight out okay we got it out and it's a bit of dirty mess there one thing i don't like about the ge's is that everything's very exposed so this thing here drips all over this thing here um that's the turntable we'll see if that's salvageable or not that's a bit of a mess um this will clean up we'll just con very light contact cleaner a, a very light painter's brush not a scrub brush but a painter's brush don't get any on here or on here on the uh, output transformers but we can clean that up quite nicely then everything else with a with a wet rag but uh, now that's out okay and then we get back to in here and I forgot that that cabinet light is also connected to that light um, the interior record player light so you're best off there's a bit of tape on here take the tape off which protects it from shorting from one side to the other uh, take photographs and disconnect I think it's just the the pink ones that go in there um, before you can take that lamp off you need to change the bulb anyway so um, you got to do that and oh there's the rails I was talking about those captive rails the air just slides right into them. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, now we're going to take this bad boy out. Um, screws full of dirt all here. Those have got to come out. And then this is attached to this piece of wood and it will lift out. Now you're going to do it gently because there are some connections, wires still connected to this. Um, and I'll show you that when we start to lift it out. Now you can lift this out very gently and rest it as I have done right here, being careful on the wood finish. You could put some rags down there, if you know what I mean. But I'm gonna show you the last connections so we can get this baby out. Um, so there's that one right there, that's a ground strap. There's another one right there, another ground strap. You're gonna unplug those antenna lines, they just pull off. And uh, this last one, this green guy, that goes down to there, you see my finger on it, right here. That goes to there. It's an AM antenna connection, so you unplug that. Um, I'm all doing this one-handed, as you can see, because I don't wanna mess anything up. But yeah, so unplug those, a lot of grounding actually, and then this thing will lift straight out. Okay, got her out on the bench. Dangly wires. Um, so this is the preamp section. Tone control section right here. Now, sometimes this will all be one's unit. And what I mean by that is the tuner section is separate. I'll show you when we start taking it apart. But sometimes it'll be this section and a larger amp hanging down to about here. It's a smaller output, but still sounds great. Um, so we now have to separate the, the wood mounting section from this. And there's a little trick for doing that because we've got to take this off and this off, this off to clean the glass and what have you. And there's not much really to be serviced in here, um, but these caps have got to be done and we're gonna clean the controls and change bulbs and all that good stuff. Um, so anyway, we'll get to that. Okay, so we have to get the uh, faceplate off so that we can get this wood off the components right here to service them. Uh, this comes straight off, it's attached from underneath, which I'll show you, but the knobs have to come off uh, under the tuning knob. There is a nut holding this plate still down. So that's got to come off as well. And then we're going to turn it over to get at the other 
parts. All right, we've got it flipped over. Now, as you can see, I have it supported. These are old lithium batteries um, and we're supporting it because if you lie it down on its face, you will break those knobs. As you can see there, there's a tuning knob there and the other rocker switches. So please support it and work gently because now we're gonna start taking bits off. Right, so this is all held in with these quarter inch nut bolts right here. There's two here, which also hold in the lamp holders because we're gonna replace those bulbs. There's a rocker switch assembly, which needs to be cleaned. Here we have the tuner assembly. Got two there as well. And also you remember the nut on the other side, we took that off. So those all are gonna come off so we can get these off. We've awesome. undone, this is the audio out from the tuner section, but the other wires right here, this is power supply. So um, yeah, it's important to have these marked correctly for the tuner section that you're just gonna take off because if you put it back together the wrong way, you will fry that. Oh, and another thing, um, you should clean these cables before you mark them because if you can see on here, it is all very gummy and sticky. So this plastic, whatever stuff they used has basically started to weep over the years and it'll get all over your hands. It's everywhere. I did actually cleaned a bit of cable, but you can see it right here. See that? Yeah. So clean these cables before you mark them because it will rub off otherwise. Um, and have a rag handy with some degreaser right there. Super clean, good stuff. Don't get it on your hands. But anyway. And there you go. So, uh, we pulled those out. We can now take this glass dial off. One, two, three, four. You can give this a good clean. This is felt underneath here. It's like a felt stuff. Clean very gently. Anything abrasive will just destroy it. So usually a little light brushing with a paint, clean paint brush is good and then air. Cleaning the pots. Remember the whole rockers things there? Um, there's those switches right underneath there, tons of dirt. You got to spray them really, really good with this stuff. Where is it? Yeah. WD-40 contact cleaner. It's good stuff because it's not really, uh, it cleans out, but it's not as abrasive as, as deoxid. So you got to get in there. Same on here, all those switches underneath there. We'll talk about this in a minute, getting this off. Um, while this is off, here's the wood fascia. Now's the time to clean this up, re-oil, or whatever, how you want to do your wood preparation. Um, we're going to clean this guy, especially here, because that's uh, see-through. And then we're going to do, we're going to do some cleaning on here as well. Uh, be careful, this is plastic. Don't get too abrasive. All right. Okay, here we have our tone volume control section. Um, I know I've been calling this the preamp section. It's technically not because that's in the amplifier. Um, so my apologies on that because normally the preamps are usually with the controls, not on this guy. Um, we've got a couple of caps there. They are actual caps. We'll be replacing them with radials. Um, you'll notice I've actually clamped this to a little worktop bench here. That's so I can work on this clean, 
and do lots of stuff without flexing cables and stuff falling over. Um, all these pots are got to be clean, these rocker switches, as with this one here, we talked about that. All the pots are got to be cleaned out with contact cleaner down in there. And uh, bulbs, we got the on off bulb right here. That's uh, a GE51. This piece of tape, this is the on off switch. This piece of tape fell off. We got to put, we got to put new tape on there and protect that. There's a lot of power going through there. Um, this cover comes off, which reveals the circuit board and um, where those caps are. Um, it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of hard, but you can see this one is marked. This number does not correspond to the photo fact. But you can see plus and minus right there. And the way these are inserted, you can see the pluses on the downside and the, uh, the minus this side. Um, we're gonna replace those with eight radials. Another good trick, if I can find my flashlight, here it is. Another good trick to hone in on the, uh, um, where that cap is, especially when you've got lots of them, is to shine a light, as you can see. You can shine a light and it'll kind of direct you to where that, uh, that specific cap is. This is kind of a handy gag when you've got loads of little guys in there, which you sometimes have. Um, so we're going to do some cleaning and some soldering. Uh, I'll show you this, this guy. So for printed circuit boards like this, it's kind of, you can use a solder sucker like that. You'll melt the solder with your gun, your iron right there. And then you can use this to suck the solder off. Or if you do it a lot like I do, there's this guy, which is a, uh, you know what it's called? It's a solder sucker, electric vacuum. And it's got a heated tip here. And I hope this will work on the first go, but let's find our cat, which is right there. So you basically put this on, it melts it, and then it sucks it off, so to speak. Um, anyway, I won't do all of it because I want to capture the, uh, the last bit, but there you go. That's a solder sucker for you. And um, we'll get some caps done, some cleaning, and uh, march on forward. Oh, I'm just going to cut into this conversation because I forgot to tell you something about the solder sucker. It's a great tool, but be careful because you can apply too much heat and literally lift off the copper or whatever it's made of. It's usually copper um, trace there, the circuit trace, um, especially on a Sears unit because Sears were really cheap and uh, their uh, copper circuit boards are pretty damn crap. Okay, the tuna section. Um, before I was saying you could just take these, these, and these out. Well, actually, you just need to take off the one side, two screws, nut bolts, and then you can actually just wiggle this out. Be very gentle with it. See, ching. Be very gentle with it. Uh, give that a good clean. And here's what I was talk talking about. It's like a felt cloth paper substance. Be really gentle with it because it will tear and destroy real easy. Um, like I said, I get this, I get this unit right here, a nice clean brush, brush it off and then use air to blow it. You know what I'm saying? Um, the tricky part is get to the serviceable caps that are in there. This is, uh, this is tricky. You're gonna take off these wing nuts right here, and then you're gonna loosen that one, and then you're gonna loosen that one. It's basically a hinge nut, so that you can do this and lift it up ever so gently. I'm trying to do this with one hand, like that. You would clamp those nuts back up that I just showed you, so you could get to those caps. You've got to remove this plate that's underneath as well. You just put this back down. You've got to remove this plate right here. And it's the same procedure as I showed you with the tone control board. But be really careful when lifting this up because as you can see back there, the tone arm, tone arm, the dial cord 
uh, for the FM and the tuner itself is connected there. And as you hinge this up, that can break. And if that breaks, you're in a world of hurt. So anyway, oh, and I'm back again. Sorry, I forgot something as usual. A couple of bulbs. You've got the stereo uh, meter bulb right there. And then you've got the dial glass bulb behind that same cloth paper. So they've got to be replaced. As you can see, I've clamped it in that open position. Like, uh, but like I said, just be gentle because you don't want to break that cord. There's the caps in there. I think there's like four of them. But um, yeah, this is the... Okay, so we're gonna get to the amp. Um, we give it a bit of a clean up. As I said before, light brush, contact cleaner, and then rag and other, you know, uh, degreaser, just to kind of make it look a little bit uh, better than it was. Um, we're gonna replace these caps right here. Um, these are actual caps. I'm gonna try and do them with radials and do the splits, um, as we did before with the solder sucker. These cans are both 2,000 each. Uh, we don't need to do the, uh, the cut off with the, uh, the cap trick that we've done before in previous videos because they're really just single ended caps, single ended, single caps. So what we'll do is, is we'll basically uh, snip off the connections and we'll lie our radials in here, leave those up there. It'll look good, it'll look nice, but they're not working and we'll put brand new ones as well as this guy right here, um, this film cap and then we'll do the desoldering for the other guys right on here. All right, so we've replaced that filter cap right there, that film cap, and we're gonna get ready to start the, uh, the big large can caps of 2000 UFs each. And the can itself wasn't clear if what was common to ground was positive to ground or negative to ground because they are electrolytic, so we have to make sure that they're going correctly. So I thought what I'd do is I'd get out the trusty photomatic, photo fact, sorry, and check exactly what is what. And as you can see here on C72, it is positive up and negative to ground. But check out the other one, positive to ground on uh, C73. So, uh, this is a photo fax. There is a picture of what the can is as regards to its number. Um, easily, easily could be uh, messed up assuming that everything is uh, negative to ground, but on this one, they swapped them over for some reason. I have to dig in to find out why. It doesn't really matter as long as it works, but this could be a uh, headache if you put them in wrong. So, uh, that's why we always use our trusty photo fact schematic. All right, let's do it. All right then, so you'll notice that I numbered those caps from underneath, 72 and 73, so I wouldn't get them mixed up. And then I snipped the ends off of the caps with these big suckers right there. Um, and then mounted them appropriately. So they're tucked in there nicely. And now we'll get to the circuit board. Okay, so before we get started here, um, I wanted to mark the back side of the board here because the previous board had plus and minus marks printed into the board. This one doesn't. So what I've done is, at C33 here, I've marked a little black dot everywhere for the positive side. Uh, there. Um, and down here, there's a dot there. That's a diode, so that's not correct for the capacitor. But um, anyway, uh, see, I've already messed up. That dot should be right there. But anyway, um, so take the time to do that before you start uh, desoldering things. It'll save a headache later. All right, so we got all those caps out. We got new ones in, and as you can see, that's what I mean by the splits. Um, works out perfectly. As you can see here, all new solder and everything correctly polarized. All right, we'll uh, do some resistor checks and uh, even check a couple of transistors and um, it'll be time 
do some bench testing. Okay, the jet pack. Uh, two screws, one, two. Loosen those, lift up. Um, you wanna clean in here, but this most important, this is the uh, internal, external speaker switch. And a lot of times this is a really dirty, bad connection. And one side won't work specifically because this is dirty, because it's exposed. So give that a good clean. Um, I mentioned before that I was gonna do um, bench testing, but I decided it's, the unit is so nice and good, I'm gonna do it in situ in here because I don't wanna take that all the way off the circuit breakers and the also the load resistors. So I'm gonna do it in here because you know, I gotta check all these connections, what have you. Um, so I will put it together and it's gonna sound awesome. If it doesn't, then I'll have to go backwards. Hey, do you remember when I said we're going to not bench test this and test it inside the cabinet in situ? Um, well, that's what happened. <laughs> it didn't work out to plan. So basically I stuck it in there and it sounded great, put it all together, played it for a day and then the next day it failed. And the reason it failed was because of this driver right here. This is an MPN. Uh, driver transistor on the left channel um, just decided to fail and it sometimes happens with new components like i.e. these caps they put additional stress on older components and they fail well luckily uh, an NT123 I had in stock was the exact replacement so uh, we're gonna do them in pairs or replace them in pairs so it's got new uh, drivers right there and um, hopefully we'll be good to go we'll back in and uh, rock on. All right. Okay, crossover caps, uh, speaker enclosures. Um, I mark them left, obviously from the front side and right so you know which way is up more than anything. Uh, this side will actually have a AM antenna behind it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take those off and we're gonna get into the crossover caps. All right, uh, the speaker enclosure. Another reason these guys, these consoles, g -Con sound great is because of the speaker enclosure. Uh, also, that's a Jensen, uh, nine times out of 10. And I think it's also sometimes a qualm or maybe the horn's qualm. But anyway, that's a Jensen because of the red cover. Um, they sound great. Um, sometimes when you open this up, you'll find that this stuff here is uh, flopped down. Get a stapler and tack it back up. Um, crossover caps one two they are different for different models um, so we'll see what they are when we pull them out also while you're in here good time to check that bulb uh, at least change it um, you can change it from the other side pull the white cap off but do it from this side I think is easier anyway let's get those caps off alrighty then got those suckers out we got a 2UF and a 10 UF uh, non polarized bipolar caps, and what we'll do is we'll replace them. I've got some 2.2s here, I've got some 10s, and what I do is normally I would cut these off if they were longer. These ones guys are a bit too short, but I cut those off and use these on the ends of the new ones. But um, what I do have is this kit here full of spade end and receiving uh, connectors, so I just put those on with some solder and uh, they'll just hook right in and be uh, sturdy. I might even use uh, the old brackets here to mount this guy. Um, but yeah, there you go. Okay, so we got the new caps in there. The original brackets were too big to use, so zip tie will be fine, stop them from flopping around during transport. Um, and also while you're in here, now's a good time to cinch up all those mounting screws right there because they will be loose. And just give them a little, a little tighten. All right, on to the other side. Okay, with the electronics pretty much done, we're gonna start addressing the cabinet. Um, as I showed you previously, it has all these light scratches. There's nothing real heinous, just a lot of light scratches. And I really don't want to uh, take the whole top surface off because it's not that bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go start with these finishing pads right here 
and just give everything a really good rub and get those light scratches out. There's different grades. This is the final finish. This is a little bit rougher. Uh, then I'm gonna clean everything with VMP and naphtha. Give everything a good clean. Then I'm gonna give it a good wipe over with Danish oil uh, right here. Uh, wipe that all off again. And then I'm gonna use wipe on poly to give that sheen back and that nice finish. Hopefully that's gonna make it pop. Okay, so we've just run over with the finishing pad and you can see the huge difference there. If you remember there earlier and here, all those little light scratches are pretty much all gone. There is some, like that guy right there, focus, kind of hard. But yeah, there's that guy right there. But, you know, they're so few and far between, it's just not really worth to take the whole surface off um, and then add another thousand dollars in price. Of course, if this was a customer's unit and they wanted that, then so be it. All right, let's crack on. Okay, so we just got it back in from taking it outside and giving it a good blowout with some compressed air, get rid of all the dust. And uh, this is the record compartment uh, to store your records. And as you can see, it's uh, the felt or whatever it is, it's a bit natty. It's a bit worn, so we're gonna replace it with some marine grade vinyl. Um, the reason I like this stuff is because it's nice and thick and easy to work with and can stand up to records being pounded on top of it. So yeah, we'll put some of that in there and it'll look uh, really fresh and new. Okay, uh, time to look at the record changer. Um, when they work, correctly they're good there's a reason why these things are battleship blue or battleship gray because they're built like battleships uh, I'll show you underneath soon but what we're going to do is we're going to get this guy off this either wheel which is NG um, and we're going to see if we can try and salvage this C's motor as you can see all these mounts have to be replaced they're all flat and uh, decompressed and uh, yeah, so uh, more to come. All righty then. So the motor. Yes, that is pretty, pretty brown in there. This thing is probably burnt out uh, more than likely. But just for shits and giggles, um, we're going to take this off and free it up because I want to see just for my own info if this thing is burnt out. I'm pretty sure it is. I have to get another motor for it. So normally when you get a seized um, motor is because the armature has welded to the bearing. Um, it's not really, it's like, what would you call it? It's like a bushing, sorry. The bushing that's inside this, which is supposed to be full of oil. That thing is welded together. So if you just pop these off and pull it off, you'll actually pull that bushing out off the uh, weld on the armature and it's basically toast. It's already toast, I think, but so what you're going to do is you're going to heat this up before taking this off. Um, stick a soldering iron in there, let it sit for 30 minutes, let it heat up, and you might get lucky and pull that off without pulling the bushing off, uh, leaving the bushing on the armature, sorry. Um, all right, um, let's see what happens. Okay, so we've had the soldering iron in there for a good 15, 20 minutes. Should have heated that up nicely. Uh, I've already took the screws out. You can see I've got a glove on, so that's gonna be very hot. And we'll see if we can pry this off without ripping the bushing, leaving the bushing, sorry, on the armature. Here we go. Oh wow, that was, uh... is this gonna happen? All right, so if you can see right in there, that's the bushing that normally welds onto here and can get left on. So we lucked out. Now, whether this is any good, I doubt because of all the brownness on it, but we'll uh, give it a clean and fire it up and see what happens. Okay, uh, this thing's pretty much toast, I think. Um, it's just an exercise in showing you what's needed to take it apart. I ended up taking the whole motor 
um, speed selector idler wheel component off the turntable. One, two, three, uh, rubber mounts there. It's really easy to get off. Uh, that's what's left of them, as you can see. Um, it looks pretty burned out to me. I'm gonna get a donor unit um, and put uh, a better motor in there. I got a funny feeling this will fail in its new life. But anyway, all right. Um, just for shits and giggles, I put it back together again to see if this thing actually spins. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Yep, that's spinning. So even if um, even if this is seized up, that's still working. I don't trust it, but it just goes to show that you can free these guys up and salvage a motor. So uh, I hope that helps for um, not necessarily a GE, but for any American-made stereo consoles because they a lot of them use the same motors. All right, okay, so uh, time to clean the transport. Um, you can remove the transport. There's three screws, one on that side, down in there, and uh, that one down there. Um, but that means you have to remove the tone arm uh, because it's all interconnected. And once you remove this, you gotta do the tone arm wire I did it once, I'll never do it again, because putting the tone on back was a nightmare. The great thing about this is, as you can see, it's all accessible for cleaning. Use Q-tips, get in there, and you can clean it all, and you can re-lube it all, just from this side and the other, because it's all very accessible. Um, I wouldn't... We're on location. Um, we're here to find a GE turntable for a new motor. There's one. And it's scanning around. I know we can find another one. That might be one. And here's some platters. Ah, there's one right there. Um, yeah, so this is my parts bin, my parts storage. As you can see, a lot of stuff here when needed um, because we all need parts. I remember sharing this once with somebody uh, on social media and uh, they're all up in arms about why I was destroying so many stereo consoles and what have you. Um, and nine times out of ten, they were on death's door. And we all need parts. I mean, just think about, thank God for all those four Granadas that ended up in the uh, junkyard so that everybody with a Mustang could go get parts. All right. See you back at the, uh, back at the ranch. Um, while I was up there, I grabbed this parts unit, which I was getting for the motor. And remember I told you about getting into this um, let me just show you how you actually can do it there's one here one here and then you've got to take two underneath here for the cap to come off but you've got to take the whole tone arm assembly off um, wires included uh, obviously you would do it from here not from inside the tone arm you would undo them here but once that's done you literally Turn it over, it slides and kind of lifts out like that. Um, like I said, this is a pretty dirty one. I've had to do it on pretty dirty ones like this, but if it's relatively clean, you can get to everything from underneath, inside with Q-tips, a lot of cleaning. You can spray the crap out of it outside um, with degreaser and then, you know, start re-lubing it, or you have to take the tone arm off. I did it once, it was a bitch to reset this, um, for this drop down, I mean, you name it, drop down, trip, everything, it was a bit of a bitch. So this is pretty dirty, you'd have to take this one out. Uh, this guy, not so bad, very, very clean. So I'll do it my old school way, but there you go. That's what it looks like. 
um, if you have to take it off. Hey, so uh, while I was at storage getting motors and stuff, um, I found this one that was seized from a previous expedition and I thought I'd share with you what I was talking about earlier, uh, how that bushing right there is welded to the armature um, and couldn't get it off without pulling it out of the carrier right here. Um, you can see the old one, this is the one with the bushing intact. But yeah, it's just a press fit. And then there's some foam stuff around here held down by these uh, kind of brass clips. But it's just a push press fit in this, in this uh, tin pot metal, whatever you call it. And uh, yeah, it's welded on there um, and pulled it out. So it happens a lot on these GEs. I'm not sure why, because um, the motors, I think I said earlier, are pretty um, the same for a lot of stuff. But anyway, um, there you have it. All right, we talked about that thing being welded on there, that uh, bushing. Uh, let's see if we can get it off. Right, <laughs> we got it off. So, if I had to do that with a uh, Burns O'Matic, you might be there for a while with your soldering iron trying to pop that off. Um, uh, turntable's pretty much done, but I thought I'd share with you something it's interesting. So, this is the armature out of that new motor. Um, and it was slow. So the new motor was slow. Um, and I measured the 33 area right there of the capstan. And it was a little, little shy uh, in size. So it was slow because that was worn. So even though it was a nice looking motor and works well, it was off speed. So I took the armature spindle off the burnt out one, um, which uh, was fine. It's just this part was burned out. That part, the armature part, was good after a good cleanup, and we're back on speed. So it just goes to show you can use pretty much everything from these parts. Okay, there she is. All done. Um, we got new caps. We got new transistors. Uh, we got a rebuilt turntable. Um, I'll do a video uh, of it playing after this one, so they're separate. Um, but yeah, she turned out real nice. Let's look at the top. Um, I ended up not having to do a coat of poly. Um, as you can see, just those finishing pads and some cleaning and some Watco oil. And uh, that turned out pretty nice. There's a couple of marks here and there, but nothing that warrants a whole takedown refinish of the surface um anyway thanks for watching um i hope you get some help on your ge restoration they've always been a little bit of intimidate uh, a little bit intimidating because of the uh, the wiring and what have you but i hope uh, i explained it a little bit to uh to benefit your restoration all right rock on